Okay, today we're going to be putting this TBS Unify Pro version 3, the SMA connector, into this uh, Darwin Baby Ape. Um, spoiler alert, um, I recorded this whole video and the SD card didn't work, so I already know the results. Um, yeah, I'm going to get into the disassembly of the drone and talk about what happened. So. Okay, so while we were sitting here taking this apart, all of the four screws, because we don't have to take anything off or desolder anything, because this is the second time I've done this, and I just want to do a quick rundown of how everything looks inside and the problems that I had have occur, happen to occur. Uh, first of all, I had a problem with the weight of the overall SMA connector and the antenna that you require to use with an SMA connector. I'll grab the scale in a minute here and I'll weigh those two parts because now they're actually out of the build. I wasn't able to get a weight on them separately, but the the drone originally weighed 71 grams and after implementing the piece as it was intended it ended up being 84 grams which is completely just unacceptable um, it didn't fly right and it was really 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 tall so if you take a look in here it's hard to see just use this to point we had the 5 volt in the ground next to it then you skip one and that's the video and then you skip another one and that's the transmitter the TX2 pad and then you set that up on beta flight already set that up on beta flight one thing you'll notice here, if you can see that, with I can stop my fucking camera from jiggling. Uh, a cable already frayed because of the temperature of the 800 milliwatt video transmitter. So keep that in mind. Uh, here, let me pull that out of the, the box. There's the old Darwin transmitter. And this is the SMA connector that came with it. With the with this video transmitter that's now installed. Let me grab my antenna. So, this has a little UFL connector on it, obviously, and that went up in here. This little white piece, because they used to have a piece of double, it comes with double sided tape, but after having taken it apart so many times and changing stuff, it didn't work anymore. So, this combination alone is so heavy on it in and of itself that it'll ruin any three inch and under build it basically instantly it wouldn't fly correctly from what I tried to get my point across when I thought I was talking to the camera when it was even though it wasn't working um, was that immediately after the first 30 seconds of flying it wasn't flying correctly that's fine um, but after coming back in and making a decision to go back to the antenna that comes with the baby ape so you have a UFL connector that came off of here where's the UFL finger on it right there little button and this antenna is actually where it belongs now this is how they come pre-configured out of the box so I just put everything kind of back together. Sorry for the wiggly camera. I'm touching the mount. Um, everything back through. One problem that I had was that it's hard to see in there. You have to cut back the initial. This comes pre-wrapped without this white piece on there. And the initial piece didn't had this black goop over the UFL connector. If that makes any sense, it's, you know, if you look the piece up, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and it had that plastic shroud. So this plastic shroud, I had to. There was a second one in the box, and I used the second one after cutting off the first one to remove this. Uh, to to try to use this the original way, what I had to do was I'd fish this through there and mounted this solidly with zap straps to this piece and. Had to con uh, basically because I had to fish this through for security reasons. Um, I already had to disconnect the UFL, defeating the purpose of that black goo. Um, 
after I was done with that and putting it back together, I quickly realized that that wasn't going to work. After setting it up and flying it, I tried to have recordings of me, you know, oh look at me, here I am on beta flight, uh, showing you how to set it up, but that's gone because uh, this SD card, you know, it just decides that you can watch the playback on this this uh, this camera, but so help you God if you can plug it into a computer and actually use your footage. No, 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 that, that would be too much. Uh, so I had to remake this whole video on this graphics card or SIM card or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I'm mad, I'm sorry. But uh, just to get a, half the point of what I was trying to originally do in this video, and it's not even going to be what I want. At least I have the flight footage or sun flight footage. It got dark, there was more errors, and I'm not going to sit here and bitch about the Darwin Baby Ape when it's kind of its fault and it kind of isn't. I, I don't understand why. But uh, other than that, the, the parts work seemingly nicely before I even get down to too much more of my bitching fest here. The, the parts are good. I can't say anything wrong about the parts. Um, uh, when I did fly it with this gigantic antenna, I could notice a, a bit of an increase, but because my components weren't working correctly, and I'm assuming the video transmitter was overheating like crazy at 800 milliwatts, I had to turn it back down to 5. And um, the flight footage you'll see first, I believe, yeah, first, is going to be... Um, where I have a really fucked up link quality on the Express LRS. Um, fun story, the, the Express LRS decided it wasn't connected today, because that, that happens with this drone in particular, don't ask me why. But uh, I had to uh, rebind it just because, which isn't actually that difficult. All you'd have to do if you have this beta FPV receiver is plug it in two, three, and then hold it in, the, put it all the way in the third time, and then it'll start flashing and then you click the bind thing on the back of your remote but uh, after I did that and took it for a test flight it felt much better everything was working um, because of my link quality that I was getting uh, I have it at it was at 7 instead of 4 or 2 like I usually want to fly it at I think it was should be 250 hertz and I must have messed something up while I was going through my remote settings turning it up to something else but, um, yeah, I was at like 7 out of 7, or yeah, 7 over 100, and then as I was going towards the crane today, it, was, it wasn't having it. I don't know why, um, other than the reason, that, other than it was too low of a refresh rate or too high of a refresh rate. I, I don't remember right now. I'm complaining again. Probably going to have to remake this. But, uh... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of mad with the experience of having uh, disassembled this thing numerous times to know that all the parts work themselves and then not wanting to work together and then being too heavy and then deciding to reset my receiver and whatever. It's not their fault. I don't know what I did wrong either at the time. Other than uh, if you do want to try to run this at 800 milliwatts, it's... Uh, you have a bench test thing like this. You have a leftovers from your Emacs devices. Um, it's too strong for that. It um, it overheated on the bench without actually displaying an image because uh, I was too close to it. The second I plugged it in, you know, away from the goggles or the receiver here, it was fine. I put it on the floor and plugged it in away from it, and across the room I could see that there was indeed an image. So I didn't have to worry about that anymore. At least I knew it works. And then I got the flight footage. So that made me feel a little better. Um, in the flight footage, you'll notice that the way that the image breaks up is definitely a lot, a lot nicer. I'll be able to show you a clip of the range test that I did with this thing back when I got it. And you'll see the difference in the way that the image breaks up. It's going to be pretty significant, I feel. Or at least you feel it to be so while you're flying. The ability for it to go black and white instead of actual fuzz is pretty big. Uh, it's a big difference in your flying security. If it goes it's all or nothing then you don't really feel safe. But okay, um, I can't get much more done and I've been talking for nine minutes now so I'm probably gonna have to trim this down.
thanks for sitting through my rant about this fucking product. Okay, just a little bit for in post of the video. Um, I'm going to do the ground level range test tonight and probably have that up in a separate video tomorrow. But uh, the breakup example isn't as good as I thought it would be, but I'm probably going to have it that you will have seen, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's a good enough comparison yet because I haven't been able to go range uh, testing like for a long range interruption of the video um, the uh, the one that I'm gonna that I was going to display maybe I'll just display that with the, the range test itself that'll make it a little more side by side instead of having to remember what it looked like in this video and see the other video so I'll just do that instead Okay, we're back here at the end of the video, and to wrap things up, I just wanted to say, you might be asking, uh, it doesn't sound like I'm speaking very highly of the product itself that I was trying to review, but uh, that's not the case. I just think that this might not be the best product to be putting the transmitter into. Um, keep in mind that using the SMA connector that comes with it is not a big deal at least not in my opinion, maybe it would be to you, but the fact that a lot of drones come with or you can cheaply acquire one of these little dipole antennas and have the luxury of a designated 5 volt transmitter that's standalone fits inside narrow canopy like this. Uh, if you could find a frame that maximizes airflow, uh, I bet you I could squeeze it into one of these Tiny Hawk frames I have sitting around and build something out of that as well. Maybe I'll buy another one of these in the future, or maybe this Darwin baby will, maybe the baby will break and I'll just gut it, who knows. We'll have to, only time will tell. But, um, if you were thinking of buying this video transmitter for the 800 milliwatts, um, definitely suggest that you look for a better frame, or maybe a, just a better design to be putting it inside of, rather than, uh, cramming it into a Darwin baby ape. Um, sadly enough, something multi-level such as this, where it has clearance and it has airflow sides and space, um, funnily enough, if you reverse this build design and you put the board on the bottom and screwed it in between those posts there, and then mounted the video transmitter standalone on top, it would maximize the airflow quite substantially, and you might have a better time with that. But it is designated 5 volts, and you have a 5 volt pad in here. So, with that being said, you would also want to look for another board. Sorry, you don't, you don't want to have a 400 milliwatt board, and you don't want to have to be bridging the VTX, because just in case you, you don't uh, bridge it properly, or it doesn't decide to turn off and something goes wrong but uh, you can just get one that doesn't have that on there 
but all in all, I do think that this is quite the step up from the original 200 milliwatt transmitter that came in a lot of these products, uh, a lot of the Darwin uh, Baby products. I just needed to replace it because it wasn't safe to be flying with the weak ass range that that cheap 200 milliwatts was giving me. So that was my justification to uh, forcibly install something like this. You're saying to yourself maybe, oh, you could have installed something that was more than 5 volts. You could have went with a whole 6, 6.5 or 7.2 volt transmitter. Yeah, I could have, but we're not going to, because I technically wanted to test the claims, the outrageous 800 milliwatt claims. Um, and then we still have to do the range test, which I'll do tonight. But uh, other than that, we're going to wrap this up here until we have the range test ready to... Um, show you guys probably tomorrow or the next day depending on the weather because I can't be flying this up the street in the rain but uh, thanks for watching and tolerating my little rant have a good night thanks for watching to, to the end of today's video here's your treat here's your trick and there's his treat